the Battle of Zutphen was fought on the 22nd of September 1586, near the village of Warnsveld and the town of Zutphen, the Netherlands. During the Eighty Years' War, it was fought between forces of the United Provinces of the Netherlands, aided by the English, against the Spanish. In 1585, England signed the Treaty of Nonsuch with the States General of the Netherlands and formally entered the war against Spain. Robert Dudley, Earl of Leicester, was appointed as the Governor-General of the Netherlands and sent there in command of an English army to support the Dutch rebels. When Alessandro Farnes, Prince of Parma and commander of the Spanish Army of Flanders, besieged the town of Rheinberg during the Cologne War, Leicester, in turn, besieged the town of Zutphen, in the province of Gelderland and on the eastern bank of the river Isel. Zutphen was strategically important to Farnes, as it allowed his troops to levy war contributions in the rich Velua region. Therefore, he left some troops blockading Rheinberg in March to relieve the town. He personally supplied Zutphen at first, but as the Anglo-Dutch siege continued, he assembled a large convoy whose delivery to the town he entrusted to the Marquis of Vasto. Leicester learned of this when a courier dispatched by Farnese to Francisco Verdugo, the man in charge of Zutphen, was intercepted. The English and Dutch prepared an ambush in which many English knights and noblemen were involved. In the end, the Spanish succeeded in delivering the convoy safely to Zutphen after a hard-fought battle. The Spanish cavalry, composed mainly of Italian and Albanian soldiers, was defeated by the English cavalry under the Earl of Essex. The Spanish infantry, however, held its ground and delivered the convoy to Zutphen. From there, reinforced by Verdugo, the Spanish troops forced the English to retreat. Zutphen was secured for the Spanish, though in the following weeks the English managed to capture a major Spanish fort, Zutphen's Sconce, on the bank of the Isle River opposite the town. Most of the English gains were negated when, a year later, the English governors of Deventer and Zutphen's Sconce defected to the Spanish ranks and handed over their places to Farnese. Background in 1585, Queen Elizabeth I of England took the United Provinces of the Netherlands under her protection and signed the Treaty of Nonsuch with the States General. England dispatched 5,000 infantry and 1,000 cavalry soldiers to the Low Countries, and Robert Dudley, Earl of Leicester, was proclaimed Governor General of the Netherlands. Commanding and trained in badly paid levies, Leicester was unable to prevent the army of Flanders under Alessandro Farnese from seizing the towns of Grave, Venlo and Neuss, though he managed to take Axel. When Farnese besieged Rheinberg in September 1586, Leicester's army marched towards Zutphen and took a Spanish sconce on the left bank of the Isle River. On 18 September Leicester laid a pontoon bridge over the Isle and took positions on the right bank of the river, thus encircling Zutphen. Leicester's Anglo-Dutch army consisted of 8,000 infantry, mainly English and Scottish but also 1,400 Irish, and 3,000 cavalry. Robert Devereux, Earl of Essex, led the cavalry, John Norries the infantry and William Pelham the camp, in which Gebhard Truxus von Wahlberg, the deposed Archbishop of Cologne, and Manuel, son of the Prior of Crato, claimant to the Portuguese crown, all resided. On receiving news of the siege, Farnese dispatched the governor of Friesland, Francisco Verdugo, to Borcolo with 400 infantry and two cavalry companies and Verdugo's lieutenant Johann Baptiste von Taxis to Zutphen with 600 infantry and two cavalry companies. As the siege continued, Farnese left some troops to blockade Rheinberg and supplied Zutphen in person with 600 cavalry and a convoy of 300 wagons of wheat. Leicester was in Deventer then, but on receiving news of Farnese's approach, he returned to Zutphen's camp. He found, on his arrival, that Counts Philip of Hohenlohen Oyenstein and William Lewis of Nassau Dillenburg had entrenched the army on a mountain along the right bank of the Isle. Leicester was informed of the possible ways through which the Spanish army might attempt to supply the town, but because of the misunderstanding no troops were deployed to guard the roads. 
led by Farnese himself in Francisco Verdugo. The Spanish troops left Borcolo at night, passed next to the Dutch town of Lochem and reached Zitfin through a narrow way flanked by deep woods. Farnese prayed in the St. Walburgis Church and later on walked up its tower to watch the English army. The following morning a war council was held after a captured Scottish officer was interrogated and revealed Leicester's plans and strength. Farnese considered the possibility of defending the town himself, but Verdugo dissuaded him to avoid giving the Queen of England the fame that Prince of Parma was like a prisoner inside Zetfine. Farnese returned to Borcolo, entrusted the command of the town to Verdugo, and sent taxis to guard a fort nearby. While the siege continued, he marched to Lingen with his army to intercept a corps of rioters who were being recruited in Germany under Elizabeth I's orders. When he arrived, however, the rioters had dissolved for lack of pay. Battle. Preparations to preserve Zetfen's garrison, Farnese gathered enough food to feed 4,000 men for three months in the towns of Groenlo, Oldenzoll, Lingen and Munster. As this food was carried to Borcolo, a large convoy was formed to resupply Zetfen. Farnese gave command of the mission to Alfonso Felix de Ravalos Aquino y Gonzaga, Marquis del Vasto, under whom he put an escort of 2,500 infantry minus 1,000 of them Spanish, and 600 Italian and Albanian cavalry. According to the Jesuit historian Famiano Strada, or just 600 infantry and 300 cavalry as claimed by the Spanish chronicler and soldier Alonso Vazquez, who was an eyewitness. On 21 September Farnese sent a letter to Verdugo commanding him to leave Zetfine with 1,000 men, meet the convoy and deliver it to the town. Farnese's courier, however, was intercepted near Lochem and Leicester learned of the convoy. Persuaded by one of his confidants, Captain Roland York, he prepared an ambush. York had served for some years in the Dutch States Army before being imprisoned on charges of pretending to surrender Den Derminde to the Spanish. When Brussels fell to Farnese, he was freed and went to serve Leicester, whose confidence he earned. Leicester waited for the Spanish convoy near the small village of Warnsveld, half a mile from Zetfeen. Supported by the Earl of Essex, Sir John Norris, Sir William Stanley, Lord Willoughby, his nephew the poet and courtier, Sir Philip Sidney and William Russell, Leicester commanded 1,500 infantry and 200 cavalry. According to the coeval English scholar Edward Grimston, Famiano Strada increases these numbers to 3,000 infantry and 400 cavalry, and Alonso Vazquez to about 8,000, many of them veteran prisons under Count William Lewis of Nassau Dillenburg. The 19th century American historian John Lothrop Motley, on the other hand, reduces the strength of the English force to 200 cavalry and 300 pikemen though adding that, a much stronger force of infantry was held in reserve in readiness. The English soldiers, unlike the Dutch, were anxious to engage the Spanish troops. Roland York told Leicester that he understood Spanish tactics, and that Spaniards were incomparable to English soldiers. Leicester formed his army over a deep, narrow way, with the mountain where the Dutch were entrenched behind. He deployed his cavalry in two squadrons, formed a large infantry battalion, put 300 or 350 advanced pikemen under Sir William Stanley and Lord Audley next to the way, and flanked the road with sleeves of musketeers and arquebusiers. As the morning on the 22nd of September was very misty, the English met the convoy before they expected. The Spanish cavalry opened the way followed by a battalion of foot, two sleeves of musketeers flanking the wagons, and some cavalry closing the way. Del Vasto left part of his cavalry near Lochem to guard the rear of the convoy. At 8 a.m., when the Spanish, led by the Marquis Del Vasto himself, had passed Warnsveld, Stanley and Lord Audley began to skirmish with the Spanish vanguard. After the first clashes, the Earl of Essex charged upon the Spanish with the English cavalry, crying, Follow me, good fellows. 
For the honor of England and of England's Queen, ambushed the Spanish vanguard was driven off by the English at the first charge. But the Spanish pikemen under Captains Pedro Manrique and Manuel de Vega, from Francisco de Bobadillas and Juan del Agulas Tercios, formed the defenders into squadron formation and kept the way open for the wagons. As the carters fled at the beginning of the fight, the Spanish arquebusiers had to take their places and brought the wagons towards Zetfine. Stanley's pikemen charged upon the Spanish squadron, but they were repelled at the push of pike. As the fight approached, Zetfine and Francisco Verdugo noticed the musketry fire. He ordered a wagon to be loaded with powder and bullets and sent it to the Spanish arquebusiers. The English cavalry, in the meantime, charged over the Spanish pikes on one of its flanks. Though they succeeded in breaking the two or three foremost ranks, Essex's men could not penetrate further. Twice more the English charged upon the squadron, but they were as well repelled. To reduce the pressure on the Spanish infantry, the Marquis del Vasto collected his cavalry and charged over Stanley's infantry, being in turn repelled. He was nearly killed when an English soldier attacked him with a battle axe, but a Spanish light horseman surnamed Arena saved him by transfixing the English with his lance. Del Vasto retired from the fight and met Fidugo and Johann Baptiste de Taxis, who sallied from Zetfine with several troops to join the battle. At the same time they were conversing, English troops unsuccessfully attacked Zetfen's sconce on the other side of the ISIL, which was defended by Count Hermann van den Berg with some men. For a moment, Badugo thought that the skirmish was inside Zapfine and the town burghers had risen in arms against the few Spanish troops he had left behind the walls. Leicester committed the same mistake, believing that the prisons under Count William Lewis of Nassau de Limburg were fighting against the Spanish inside Zapfine. During the confusion, the cavalry left behind by Del Vasto, which included the Italian and Epiroque companies under Appio Conti, Hannibal Gonzaga, George Crescia, the Marquis of Bentivoglio and Niccolo Sefish, reached Zetfine. Count Hannibal Gonzaga and the Albanian captain George Crescia attacked the English on their own, without Del Vasto's orders. Crescia was dismounted and taken prisoner by Lord Willoughby, while Gonzaga, not wearing his close helmet, received a serious slash in the neck and fell from his horse. On the English side, Philip Sidney, governor of Lissingen, was fatally wounded in a leg in the final charge. The Spanish cavalry then sought protection behind the infantry, which kept the English cavalry at bay. Badugo, supported by the Albanian captain Nicolau Basta and the Spanish Evangelista de las Cuevas, Commissar General of the Cavalry, managed to restore the order in the Spanish ranks. Seeing the good order of Badugo and Del Vasto's men, the English and Dutch commanders did not renew the action and began to retire back to their camp. A handful of Spanish pikemen, including some low-ranking officers, disobeyed their orders and began to pursue the English. Aftermath, the Spanish soldier Alonso Vazquez labelled the Battle of Zetfines one of the best factions that until that time was ever seen in Flanders. For many years it was common among Spaniards and Netherlanders to call a hard-fought action as warm as the fight of Zetfine. According to John Lothrop Motley, it is probable that the encounter would have been forgotten by posterity but by the melancholy close-up upon that field to Sidney's bright career. Sidney allegedly had removed his cuisses when he saw that William Pelham was not wearing any. However, by the 1590s cavalry soldiers wore less armour than in the past, and this, instead of Sidney's solidarity toward his companion, cost his life. Sidney was carried to the town of Arnhem to recover, but he died three weeks later of gangrene, as surgeons were unable to extract the bullet. Historians are uncertain about the number of casualties both sides suffer during the battle. Motley claims 13 horse and 22 foot killed on the English side, against perhaps 200 men on the Spanish side. On the other hand, Vasquez claimed that the Spanish were winners with very little loss, having wounded and slaughtered many people to the rebels.
On 12 October, for the third time, Farnes supplied the garrison of Zapfine personally, as he had done the first time. Later on, he sent Vidugo back to Friesland and left Johann Baptista von Taxis in charge of Zapfine. After that, the Spanish army took its winter quarters. When Farnes moved to Brussels to spend the winter there, the Earl of Leicester continued the siege of Zutphen. He was not able to take the town, but succeeded in occupying several forts beyond the ISIL, including Zutphen's sconce, which was carried by surprise by Edward Stanley, brother of William Stanley, and twelve other soldiers. Shortly after the English and Dutch also took their winter quarters. Sir William Stanley was given the command of Deventer, Sir John Burroughs of Duisburg, and Roland York of Zutphen's Sconce. Stanley and York's appointments were met with suspicion by the Dutch states, because Stanley was openly Catholic and York a man of dissolute character. Leicester expressed his full confidence in both soldiers. But in 1587 Stanley and York shifted sides to the Spanish party and handed De Venter and Zutphen's sconce over to taxis. Stanley and York's acts not only negated the gains of the 1586 campaign, but also undermined Leicester's reputation and the Dutch state's confidence in the English troops. The Dutch states decided to appoint Count Maurice of Nassau as Governor-General of the Netherlands and Philip of Hohenlohe as his lieutenant. With the loss of De Venter and Zutphen's sconce, the Spanish were able to levy war contributions in the provinces of Utrecht, Overeersel and Gelderland. Zutphen and De Venter remained in Spanish control until their capture in 1591 by Maurice of Nassau.